In a forgetting land, the reign of the mega beasts were starting. During and after the dinosaur planet, the world was full of creatures. There were hunted and hunters. Today, we uncover the largest hunters ever. Hi, I am Ryan from UK. Machirodus lahias hoopoop was a gigantic predatory big cat. It was the heaviest cat ever found. It lived from 5.5 to 9 million years ago in North America. It weighed up to 430 kilograms, and powerful back legs suggest he hunted by ambush, leaping onto prey and tearing its neck rather than chasing it down. This animal learned to not waste stamina. Unlike the Smilodans and Barbarophelis freaky, the teeth can't be seen outside the mouth on Machirodus lahias hoopoop. These weren't brittle and the jars were powerful unlike the former's. It competed with Borophagene dogs, wolves, etc. and preyed on Carmelids and others weighing more than 2,700 kilograms. This was the largest of the Felidae family. Number 2. Nandong Tiger. This giant was the largest tiger in history. It was the same size as the Smilodon, but stronger. The first or second strongest cat on this list is this beast of Indonesia during the Pleistocene. They reached 13.5 feet in length and 420 kilograms. They were discovered fossilized near the Nandorm village. They competed with all predators at the time. Nandong tigers were apex predators. Nandong tigers were predators, hunting water buffaloes, Malayan tapirs, large deer, Joven rhinoceros, Gigantopithecus and even baby stegodons and Asian elephants. There, it competed with all predators. Mr. Ryan, do you think humanity will stand a chance against this monsters if they were not extinct? Will they rule the planet again? Humanity is on a whole another league. We have arrows, spears, guns and explosives to devastate them. They will be hunted or they will survive like polar bears, despite the threat. They won't rule. Viewers, I'm continuing. Number 3. Mosback Lion. It lived in Eurasia during the Pleistocene. This powerhouse was the largest lion ever, being 400 kilograms and 4 meters long, it edges out the American lion by 40 kilograms. Skeletal remains of P. L. fossilist populations in Siberia measure larger than those in Central Europe, compared to a modern lion, this was at least twice as large. Herbivores that coexisted with the lion included the hippopotamus, narrow-nosed rhinoceros, straight-tusked elephant, southern mammoth, moose, steppe bison and fallow deer. Giant jaguar is an extinct subspecies of the jaguar that was endemic to North America during the Pleistocene epoch from 1.8 million to 12,000 years ago. The mass was 162 to 204 kilograms and the length was 2.7 meters. The animal was 0.9 to 1 meter tall. It had 34 centimeters long and 36 centimeters wide paws. With a speed of 84.8 kilometers per hour and 1960 psi of bite force, Panthera onca augusta was a powerhouse. 
It thrived with giant beavers, Arctodecimus, Smilodon fatalis, American lion, giant ground sloths, dire wolves, mammoths, mastodons, horses, elephants, etc. Number 5. Eurasian cougar. Puma pardoids, Owens panther or Eurasian cougar was a felonae member that lived in the Pliocene to Pleistocene epoch, 1.8 million to 11,000 years ago in Eurasia. It was the largest puma ever found. It was named in 1846. The animal averages 1.5 meter in length and 90 centimeters tall at the shoulders, with a mass of 90 to 130 kilogram, with 8.8 .8 centimeters long and 10.2 centimeters wide paws, they are deadly. They leap onto prey gracefully, delivering a powerful smash, they suffocate or kill it by biting the neck, windpipe or spinal cord. It coexisted with cave hyenas, deer, cane lids, cave bears, steppe brown bears, cave lions, mammoths, etc. And, of course, its strongest rival, European leopard. Panthera pardospelea, sometimes called the European Ice Age leopard or late Pleistocene leopard, is a fossil leopard subspecies, which roamed Europe in the late Pleistocene from 0.6 MYA to 2 KYA. Measuring 2.6 meters from head to tail and being 0.7 to 0.8 meters tall at the shoulders, it was 90 to 130 kilograms. It had similarities to the Persian leopard. Estimation shows the animal had 14.5 to 20 centimeters long paw. It was named in 1936. The greatest threat was bears, pumas, lions, etc. It is not precisely known which prey species these leopards hunted, although they may have ate ibex, boar or deer. It also have killed cave bears during hibernation by ambush. The bears were certainly vulnerable to these animals during hibernation, relentless of what you think would happen in a one-on-one -on -one fight. <coughs> by a 359 to 549.5 psi of bite force. One-year-old bears weighing 150 kilograms would be taken down by leopards face to face. The giant cheetah, Achaenonyx pardonensis, is an extinct species of big cat, its closest living relative is the modern cheetah. It lived from early Pliocene to late Pleistocene of Eurasia. It was named in 1828. It was 100 kilograms and being 0.9 meters tall at the shoulders, he was 3.4 meters long, with the tail. It had a bite force of 1,021 psi, which is greater compared to an African lion at 1,000 psi. It ran at speeds of 85 km per hour and was slower than the African cheetah due to the increased size. It ate muntjac deer, ibex, bighorn sheep, elk and sampha deer. It was a worse climber than today's cheetahs to the higher number of shredded claws, which fell as the animal tried to climb but couldn't. It competed with hyenas, wolves, homotherium, several big and small cats, bears, etc. It became extinct due to the competition at the late Pleistocene. 
Cats with retractile claws were evolving more and they stole food or hunted more than cheetahs. And, as the Pleistocene climate change and the evolving megafauna were too quick for the giant cheetah to cope with, the one and only mighty giant fell forever. I am Freddy from USA, a guy interested in animals and your host. Today we will look at a predator. There existed 5 kg hyenodon microdon, 320 kg hyenodon gigas to the 650 kg meghistotherium and the 50 kg hyenodon horridus. Despite the name, these weren't hyenas. As there are so many, let us look at the Oda Hyenodonta. It includes families of Arphiidae, Indohyenodontidae, Caholiidae, Limnocyonidae, Cynophidae, Hyenodontidae, Proviveridae, Hyanoloridae, Prionogolidae, and Teratodontidae. The biggest of them was from Africa. In family Hyenaloridae, subfamily Hyenaloranae, in the genus Simba Kubwa, existed Simba Kubwa, Kutok Africa. It was named by Borths Stevens on 2019 AD and the animal is yet to be explained by us, but we will bring you the latest findings. The fossils of Simbacubwa were first discovered by Matthew Borths and Nancy Stevens when they were examining fossils stored at the Nairobi National Museum in Kenya. The type specimen consists of a mandible from the lower jaw, a right upper maxilla and some post-cranial remains. The light wear patterns on the dentition indicate that the specimen was young. It had a length of 3.8 meters. Mass of them were of big controversies. Some stated the animal to be 1,500 kilograms. Others stated it to be 600 kilograms. The website of prehistoric fauna estimated the animal to weigh 1,100 kilograms on average using fossilized estimates. The animal lived on Kenya in Africa 23 million years ago. Its extinction reason is unknown. The animal had a hyenodon-like jaws instead of a meghistotherium-like jaw as the jaw structure were more slender and longer. The relative bite force likely exceeded 2340 psi of bite force. This may not be 100% accurate. I have theories of its hunting. 1. It chased down and tired prey and went in for killing. 2. It rammed its prey in any part and crushed its head or neck. 3. It leaped onto prey and directly bit its head or neck and crushed it. It fed on all prey available in the area for its size to take down. It competed with Sinolos, apes and others of the order. One thing is sure, he was the apex predator of his soil. I am Kingsley, from North America. I love studying, uh, extinct animals of South America. Glad to take part on your video. I know 16% of you are from USA, and you probably know about grizzly bears. Some nerds know about Arctodus simus, which was a 1,763 to 2,204 pound bear. Others know the 2645 pound Ursus briscus. But the biggest of all was a 1,873 to 3,300 pound bear. Arctotherium angustidens, or bear beast, is an extinct genus of the Pleistocene South American short faced bears within Ursidae. Their ancestors migrated from North America to South America during the Great American Interchange 
following the formation of the Isthmus of Panama during the late Pliocene. Arctotherium was named by Hermann Burmeister in 1879. They lived from 2.0 to 0.01 MYA, existing for approximately 1.99 million years. They had a mass of 850 to 1,500 kg on average. Some non-credible sources say the animal was 1,750 to 2,207 kg. It was 2 meters, 6.5 feet, tall on all fours and 3.4 to 4.3 meters, 11.1 to 14.1 feet, tall on hinds. Some say it was a scavenger. Others say it was a complete omnivore. Others claim it to be hypercarnivorous. Ultimately, we believe, they were foragers. The term means a being which is a carnivore, omnivore and scavenger, munching on all available resources. I think this was a great deal. If you ask me, to maintain this size for a long time by completely being a hypercarnivore fits to the polar bear. It lacks too many predators and foes. Arctotheriums were fast and 32 to 72 km per hour speed is good and the bear had stamina and it had slender legs than modern bears for chasing. It could not be a predator all time. There were wolves, smilodons, predatory cats and others. If you don't know, almost all predators there were group hunters there and Arctotherium was a lone hunter. The African wild was represented that time. The bear is big and needs food. It took a forager's life. Hunt when needed, eat plant or carrion when needed. Another reason he spent most scavenging or eating berries and found hunting a last resort was its bone structure. Its legs were slender and it could outrun a horse through a straight line. But the horses trump him using sharp turns. As a representative model is made, you can see its bones broke easier and was slender and not fitted for this. Watch this. And it worked. The bear had a height taller than the largest African elephant. The height was used to hunt prey like ground sloths and for intimidation or mating displays. It had powerful claws and arms. It didn't have a hump and possibly didn't climb trees. It had a bite force of 8384.6 newtons in comparison to the spectacled bear, its living relative. The bite force was so great due to the higher length to width ratio and the skull being short. This is an estimate and shouldn't be considered 100% sure. The animal used its jaws and paws to end its prey. It hunted prey such as Hippidian macrachinia, giant ground sloths, giant capybaras, giant beavers, glyptodons, early humans, young mammoths, berries, and other plant products with carrion. It is also said to chase off predators away from their hunt and ate the already dead prey. They were said to be extinct due to the climate change, flourishing of mankind, and new carnivores. Just as most American megafauna, the bear was outperformed and didn't cope and went off 10,000 YA. Our first collaboration is here. The owner of Wild Channel has something to say about the dire wolf. Named by Joseph Lydie, their teeth were powerful and the jaws were big. Share us some words and measurements. No, we are not talking about any art game. The dire wolf was the largest wolf in history. The mass was 68 to 100 kilos and it was 85 centimeters tall and 1.6 meters long. It lived in North America and parts of Asia. Due to higher fossils found, they were in packs of more than 30 members. By stable isotope analysis, they were found to have eaten bison and horses.
Much like modern wolves, they cared for others. One was found injured by a serious injury, by a kick to the skull, by a horse or bison and an injured limb, and it survived for five months. A wolf can only survive for four weeks and a bit longer. So it was provided with food. Dominant pack alpha male and female were the first to eat and on the social structure, the power couple ruled the pack. Similar social structures as modern wolves were found among. They were trapped mainly in tar pits. When they heard a prey's cry, actually the prey were stuck there and the wolves approached it. Then they were also stuck. The fossils of the wolves were found trapped in the so-called Labrea tar pits. There were more than 4,000 dire wolf fossils here including pups which accidentally got trapped here. The wolves didn't have any experience and was trapped here. Those who were with experience didn't need to tell the tale. Pups were provided with food until they hunted for food at six months in minimum. They were cooked eaters as the jaws were wider and produced a higher bite caution than any wolf ever. They teared huge chunks of flesh and swallowed it. Competition from Smilodon, short-faced bears, grey wolves, humans and others. They hunted deadlier prey than modern wolves. Extinction reasons were climate change and a possible comet impact. And they had the tendency to chew bone. They lose some teeth by the process. Their teeth were mainly found 15,000 years ago. The teeth number decreased after 12,000 years ago. This happened due to the lack of bone from the prey they hunted. The lack of bones means lack of prey. That may lead to an extinction along with the previous reasons I said. Another impact along with this was that humans brought diseases with them. And our grey wolves survived as an underdog as they hunted smaller prey and dire wolves were in great numbers and sizes. They could not change due to their habits and their packs need a lot of food. Many predators in my point of view takes the incorrect path. The most of the time remaining as an underdog and being quick and nimble to hunt and limiting with a small amount of food actually trumps over a desire to get bigger and deadlier. But sometimes it worked in the case of short-faced bears but not for our mate, Mr. Tyres. They with many Pleistocene megafauna fell off 10,000 to 11,700 years ago somewhere around the arriving Holocene epoch.